Scottish rapper here, and I would like to do my first Poverty Safari blog, uh, which is a series of blogs uh, or vlogs that I will be running uh, up to the release of my book, which comes out uh, next year. So it's a way to talk through some of the things that will be explored in the book and also maybe elaborate on some of the stuff that might not be included in the book just because I can't include everything. So just to sort of raise awareness of the kind of line of thinking that I, I'm going on with this uh, and today I wanted to talk a wee bit about diet and nutrition which is a big thing that affects everyone in society but it is associated more and more with the kind of health problems that you see in areas of economic or social deprivation, especially in the West, obviously. I mean, in other countries where there's a shortage of food, you have a similar kind of problem in terms of how nutrition or lack of nutrition affects people. Whereas here we have an abundance of food and, and, uh, and we have an abundance of toxins in the food. And so quite a toxic food chain that can lead to compulsions and addictions with food uh, leads to lots of health problems that are often associated with poverty. So my own experience of this is I was brought up um, on a very high fat, high sugary diet. Uh, my grandparents obviously, uh, they grew up in a time where uh, things like sugar and sweet foods and sweeties uh, we are quite um, quite rare to come across uh, during a time of rations, and then as the, their lives went on, these f foods became more prevalent and became more uh, easier to get your hands on. And so, when I would be at my granny's, then we would always be having fry ups, and it wasn't grilled food either. It was always fried food, fried and fat. Uh, we would always have biscuits and sweets, sugary cereals, uh, fizzy drinks, getting delivered to the house, ice cream, all of these things. And all of these things when you're a kid are really nice and you associate them with rewards and there's a certain level of comfort. There's so many experiences that you associate with food and certain types of food like going to the pictures or going on a trip. And so built all of these associations up in me very early on. So later on in life, uh, when I got into my teens, then obviously I still have quite a high metabolism. I'm still eating all of this junk food and I'm not really putting on any weight. So it's not really a big deal. Um, but what actually happened was when one, when I moved out of, of, of the family home and I was having to kind of prepare my own food, I realised I didn't actually know how to prepare my own food. So I would buy either takeaways or I would buy processed food that was already pretty much made that I just had to heat up or kind of like cook in some way that didn't require much like advanced knowledge. Um, so I, I, I then entered a new phase where I thought I was eating healthier because I was eating food that was packaged in a certain way as to suggest that it was low in fat or that it was conducive to a healthier lifestyle. So it took me a long, long time to realise that, uh, that, you know, that a lot of the packaging on food is actually a bit deceptive. And if you aren't really knowledgeable about nutrition, then you can end up spending lots of your money on food that's undermining your lifestyle or the lifestyle that you aspire to and pro pro possibly creating health problems further down the line. So fast forward to now, I'm 32 years old. I have stopped drinking because I can't actually take alcohol into my system because once I take it into my system, something about it hijacks my mind and then I can't regulate either how much I take or how I behave when I'm on it. Uh, I've stopped smoking cigarettes for the same reason, although cigarettes don't have the psychoactive uh, component to them. Um, they do actually set up a compulsion for themselves, so every time I have a cigarette, I think I'm relieving something when actually I'm activating something. It took a long while to get distance from my addictive thinking around both of these areas of life and trial and error and failing uh, and feeling demoralised and feeling powerless. 
and then now the new frontier since I got sober has been eaten because uh, I've been emotionally eaten. I've been dealing with how I feel by eating the same way that I dealt with how I felt with all of these other vices that I've managed to stop. So no alcohol, no drugs, no cigarettes. What are you left with? You're pretty much left with sex and food and that includes pornography and we'll talk about that another time. Um, so now you're like, okay, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit this nail on the head. I don't want to end up being overweight. I don't want to end up having health problems associated with obesity. I don't want to become diabetic. So I know what to do. I just need to stop eating sweeties. So you stop eating sweeties, but then you're still eating yogurts and you're still eating bread and you're still drinking fizzy juice because you don't realise that while all these things might be marketed as if they are healthy, they're actually full of sugar. And for me, sugar is the toxin. So what I've realised is I've had to navigate this labyrinth of the kind of consumer paradise where there is so much choice out there that it's bamboozling and there's so much conflicting information about nutrition, a lot of it coming from the food industry, um, that, that it's difficult to know what to do. So, for example, I thought Lucasade was a health drink up until maybe four or five years ago. That's how poor my understanding of nutrition has been. And I don't even consider myself, like, like terribly smart or terribly stupid, but of a kind of average intelligence with an average education. And I don't actually, uh, I still can't actually believe that I would have thought Lucasade was a sugary drink. So there's lots of things that I've been taking into my system because I wanted energy, not realising that it raises my blood sugar levels, which then causes a crash later on, which means I'm tired and lethargic falling asleep at work, feeling really low on energy, feeling really mentally tired and realising that all of these things that I'm putting into my body are having a negative effect and also hijacking my mind, which means that even with my best willpower and my best intentions, the toxins in my brain and in my body are sending out their own signal, they're demanding more and this creates in my head all the dodgy reasoning and all the the, the dishonest thinking that leads to, I'll just have, I'll buy a packet of biscuits and I'll just have one out of it, and then you know what's going to happen. So today, I make this video because about a month ago, another attempt was made by me to try and make changes based on everything I've learned through all the failures of trying things and failing. So previously, I just decided to stop eating sweeties, it didn't work. Then I thought, I'll just have yogurts if I need something sweet. It didn't work. It would always lead to big binges on sugar. And me, no matter how much hard work I was putting in, how much exercise I was putting in at the gym, I would always stand on the scales and I would always be running about the same weight. And I couldn't understand it. So I decided to cut out bread. All bread. White bread, brown bread, pizzas, all of that. Cut all that out. Now, I might go back later on, once I've dropped a bit more weight, but it was really undermining me in these early days, so I cut it out, cut out fizzy drinks, I cut out all sweet, all sugars, all refined sugar, the only sugar that I take in is through um, fruit, which I usually have with some Greek yogurt, all full fat by the way, no low fat products, because what I learned was low fat products are full of sugar, because fat is the thing that makes things tasty and that fat's actually not bad for you within reason. It's the sugar and the low fat products that is getting everybody. Uh, as well as that, obviously, just having been eating chocolate, not even dark chocolate, because for me that was a kind of gateway. I might go back, obviously, at some point and have something sweet when I've dropped a wee bit more weight. But essentially, within the last four weeks, I've managed to drop 10 pounds off my weight. And that's not with a low-carb diet. That's not with a fad diet. That's just with, like, eating clean, essentially. You know, so in the morning, I have breakfast with fruit. Um, sometimes I maybe have uh, grilled sausages and bacon and eggs um, or porridge with fruit. Uh, and then in the afternoon have something, you know, a bit of protein, some carbs and some vegetables or fruit. And if I feel hungry during the day, then uh, then I just have fruit as a snack or maybe like, I don't know, 
um, some almonds or something like that. And after a while, actually, that that's all right because you begin to make new associations with your food. So you start to start to eat the food, and you think, "This is me putting fuel into my body. This is me. Um, this is me helping my concentration. This is going to help me focus." So when I'm eating, it's not always about comfort. It's about looking at my life and what I want to achieve. And thinking this is helping me do that, um, but all through these years, and I'm sure I'll be back here one day saying oh, I've fucked up, I've put on this amount of weight, um, I was pure stressed out, or I had an argument with my girlfriend, and I just thought fuck it, and I've ended up on a four month binge, and I've lost all my gains. And if that happens, you know I will come and make a video about that. But basically, what I was trying to get across is that somewhere along the line, then emotionally eating the same way as I used a, 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 a used alcohol and drugs uh, it actually shows that there's something fundamental in me that I need to address and that I'll always use external stimulants as a way to soothe something else within me and what I'm trying to ascertain is how much of that is to do with where I come from and the sort of economic context of where I come from and the social context of what I come from because I know that all people deal with these things but the severity of these impulses and urges and the prevalence of them uh, increases where poverty is found and so when you look at a housing scheme you will see the local economy consists basically of uh, services that provide temporary relief from stress of some sort or another and that stress also comes in the form of addictions or compulsions which beget themselves so if you look at a row of our shops in a place like Mary Hill and a place like Poso and a place like Milton you're going to find these things you're going to find a chip shop you're going to find a grocery that also sells alcohol and is full of sweets and processed food you're probably going to find a beauty parlour of some sort um, with tanning salons and uh, and maybe you'll find a dentist or a doctor surgery in that raw shops, but it's increasingly rare. But what you see is that the local economy uh, is based on people um, feeding um, compulsions that bring them temporary relief, but that undermine their long-term goals. Because nobody really wants to be overweight, regardless of you know how much work is done to to stop body shaming. No one wants to be obese. Nobody wants to feel too big to sit on a bus or no one wants to feel conscious of what they're wearing and how they're inhibited in their clothes. That was one of the things that was really getting me down. Like, I was starting to notice my clothes were only fitting me. I was starting to notice, like, I would sit down and I would feel like my shirt was going to burst or sometimes even did. Or I would button up my trousers and a button would come off and I would just feel quite humiliated and actually this was leading me to eat more because I was thinking fuck it there's no point uh, you know after all this effort I've put in with stopping drinking and drugs and smoking and it turns out I'm just going to be a big fat diabetic um, you know so sometimes that's difficult because I see other people out there in life who are really lean who naturally take to a kind of less toxic diet and I wonder what is the difference between where they come from and how they live and where I come from and how I live and actually a lot of it is about emotions and how that sets up compulsions and coping mechanisms which are then fed into by the toxins that are available in our society. So the question is how much of this is about taking personal responsibility and how much of it is about you know making people aware of the fact that the food industry out there is basically trying to exploit the fact that we're not very knowledgeable about how our bodies work in relation to our emotions. Um, so I wonder what some of you uh, think about this if you would want to leave some comments explaining maybe some of the struggles that you're facing or how you overcame those struggles. Uh, maybe some of you have adopted other methods to lose weight. Maybe some extreme diets. I don't know. There are a lot out there. I've tried a few things and I always found that after a few days I just felt too miserable. And the key for me seems to be I need a diet that's sustainable. Something that I enjoy. Something that sometimes is a wee bit hard because who doesn't want to just have a Mars bar every now and then, but something that I enjoy where there are sweet options involved.
but it's about recognising as much that as I want these other things. It's actually just my brain that's craving them, and it's telling my head that I want them. But really deep down, I know that I don't because it makes me unhappy. So I wondered if you, uh, I wonder if you would share your experiences with me, and I hope you don't mind the video talking about my own progress. I don't mean to rub it in anybody's face, but it is important to celebrate the wee successes when they come, especially because for months and months and months I've been banging my head off a wall with this stuff. Um, so, we'd be happy to hear from you below, and thanks for watching.